And check out the view from the CTV Skywatch camera looking south on 13th Street North. That's the direction the rain is going to start coming from. But while you're doing that, I have to say congratulations to Randy Blacker. Randy was named the Volunteer of the Year uh, at the Lethbridge Office of the Parkinson Society of Alberta. So congratulations to Randy. Apparently, he's just a wonderful volunteer, and he updates the phone list, and he does all that good work. So that's really good news. You saw the temperature, 14 degrees. That is our current high. We achieved it at 1 p.m. 5 degrees was our low at 6 a.m. Temperatures all over. We got some healthy values still to the east of the province, and that's because the area of high pressure is disintegrating and moving further to the east. What we are watching is this big low pressure center. The rotation around it is actually picking up a ride on the jet stream and it is moving from the south to the north. So that is the direction of this. And then it will ease off into the mountains uh, overnight tonight and then continue on that trek and kind of stall for the next two days. So that's why the heaviest rainfall amounts right now look to be in the Crow's Nest Pass in the southwest corner of the province but you can see right now we're already starting to pick up pockets of precipitation all over the province not very organized right now but when we get into tomorrow we'll start to see all this green area become much more uh, combined and much more uh, centralized as it rotates across the mountains tomorrow so that's what, what we've got to look forward to is rain and plenty of it starting tonight continuing tomorrow the clearing effect is going to be from the south to the north so that's why we're looking late Friday into Saturday morning to see clearing here and in Calgary, areas north of Calgary, late Saturday into Sunday morning for your clearing trend. But as you can see, look at that combined area uh, uh, moving into the area tomorrow. And then we've got some pockets of extremely heavy rainfall. But the one that doesn't show up, of course, is for the Crow's Nest Pass. But you're expecting to have some very, very severe doses of precipitation there as well. So just be aware of that. 11 degrees in St. John's right now. We've got some thunderstorm watches and warnings for southern Ontario and an area of Quebec just south of the St. Lawrence. But the flip side of the coin, in northern Ontario, they're expecting frost overnight tonight. So very different temperature gradients that you're looking at there. Some sunshine in Winnipeg right now, and they had some sunshine in Regina and Saskatoon before all that cloud cover starts to make its way into Saskatchewan. And the wraparound effect from that system will start to affect them as well. 22 in Edmonton, 10 in Kelowna. Uh, pretty cloudy with just some sunny breaks in Vancouver right now, but almost total cloud cover in Whitehorse and Yellowknife, 8 degrees and 7 respectively respectively in those areas. East Kootenai looking at 20 millimeters of rain starting tonight, five degrees for a low. Tomorrow, 10 to 15 millimeters, eight degrees for a daytime high. Your winds will be out of the west. Crow's Nest Pass, 20 to 30 millimeters of rain tonight. Another 20 to 30 millimeters of rain possible tomorrow, nine degrees for a daytime high, so a chilly day in the pass. Medicine Hat looking at partly cloudy skies tonight, but 10 millimeters of rain is expected to affect your area tomorrow. Here in Lethbridge, we're looking at that chance of shower activity starting up tonight. We had a few sprinkles this afternoon out of that cloud cover. 8 degrees for a low, 12 for a high tomorrow. We're expecting anywhere from 10 to 15 millimeters of rain tomorrow and a high of 12 degrees. So you can see Thursday, we're looking at the heaviest amount of rain. Friday, still expect periods of rain, maybe some breakthrough uh, sunny skies, but certainly rain will be the dominant weather feature. And then as we get into Saturday and Sunday, you notice that clearing trend uh, is going to be happening the week weekends turning out to be not bad at all. Now, if you're going to be out on the weekend, of course, you might be experiencing dry eyes, and there's a whole list of reasons, medications, uh, certain conditions that you can have, but one of the most popular reasons is people not wearing their sunglasses. So you need a good quality pair of sunglasses that blocks out 99 to 100% of UVA and UVB rays. So check them out with your optometrist. And that's our Live Better tip from Draffin's Pharmacy for this week. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe. Talk to you tomorrow. There's a new electronic limb for amputees. It's called the eye limb. According to researchers, it is life changing. And as Ali Donnelly reports, it's one step closer to creating the bionic man. Using two hands to throw a football is new for Mike Benning. When he was 14, this Massachusetts man had an aggressive form of cancer that forced doctors to amputate his arm below the elbow. For decades, he wore a prosthetic with a hook for a hand. How am I going to hold my daughter? How am I going to hold my son? 34 years later, Benning has become the first person in the country to have the eye limb, the newest bionic hand on the market. When I want to open my hand, I will fire this muscle and it will open. 
his new hand is powered by sensors that detect muscle activity, like twitches, to prompt movement. It can also be paired with a mobile device and a special app that directs the hand into 24 different grip options. Standard three-jaw chuck. The grips help Benning pluck strawberries from a bowl, type, empty the dishwasher, fold laundry. Simple things like that that we all take for granted around the house now have become easier for me and I've just gained another 15 minutes in my day. Benning, who also volunteers helping new amputees adjust to limb loss, says while the new technology is marvelous, it isn't cheap. And they can vary depending on the technology, it can be anywhere from $3,500 up to you know, over $100,000. In the most recent study, which is more than 10 years old, researchers at Johns Hopkins estimated that lifetime health care costs of traumatic amputation figure out to be more than half a million dollars. Prosthetist Matt Micus says insurers vastly differ on what costs they will cover. Medicare, for example, covers 80 percent of prosthetic costs, but patients are not fitted with one prosthesis for life. Before this technology existed, I would have to go back maybe every three to five years to get fitted with a new prosthesis. We're not sure how often I'm going to have to go back with this new technology. But still, Benning says prosthetics can change a patient's world, like they did for him. When I had my hook, I couldn't hold my daughter's hand. I couldn't clap. And now... That is fascinating. I'll bet he's really glad he can unload the dishwasher with two hands now. Yes, he probably is. Thrilled. Brooks Bandits, big hey, yeah. parade. Let's, let's talk more about Brooks. They paraded yesterday, and we're going to talk about their head coach and general manager, for that matter. Uh, what are his plans, hockey plans, for the future?